checks like it did so. Oh, look who's late again. Look, look who's, look who's late again. I'm busy, okay, just stop it. I was gonna tell y'all to shut up, but then um, someone got mad at me in the comments the other day for telling y'all to shut up as a joke. Um, I'm not saying I owe you an apology, that's just simply what happened. <laughs> So we're like two episodes deep into Revi so far, which means I'm obligated to talk about the show because that's just what I signed up to do at this point, huh? I'm not gonna lie. I kind of like having some of my like initial thoughts and reactions to things sort of packaged into nice little videos like this. This is more for me than it is for anyone else, to be honest with you. <laughs> we're not really gonna be talking about the episodes themselves, more so we're just gonna be generally going over some of my likes and dislikes about what Revice has presented to us thus far. So let's squash the elephant in the room first and foremost. Uh, there's gonna be a weird tone shift here, but um, <clears throat> Vice's voice actor is a piece of I didn't really feel comfortable making a video or like, talking about this um, before now, mostly because I, I was disgusted with the idea of like making content and like sort of like not profiting off of it, but using it, like using the controversy for my YouTube. It kind of, I don't know, not, not, not to like throw shade at anyone else who did like make videos about it. I'm sure that that's not the reason that other people made videos about this. I'm just saying the concept just made me personally uh, feel uncomfortable for that reason. And I, and I think you'll kind of see why in a minute. I want to throw out um, first and foremost that my opinion on this only really counts for so much uh, considering that um, I'm clearly not of the offended if that wasn't obvious. But I, I do feel very comfortable saying that there are zero excuses for bigotry and that what he did was unforgivable and disgusting. He is an awful person and I'm frustrated that he's involved with this show and, and just common being a part of Common Rider in general. It frustrates me. Now, with that being said, I don't really know if this is the right time to be talking about what I have to say next. Um, but I'm, I'm gonna do it anyway. Another reason why I've sort of waited so long to talk about this is because I have this criticism, not about the actor, but more so about like the, the fandom itself. I feel like if I were to have stated this, while the actual events were taking place, that it would have sounded like I was trying to sort of like decrease the blow of what's happening or like not validate what Vice's voice actor did, but sort of like draw attention away from that. And I, I didn't want to do that. So with that in mind, I really want to stress that what I have to say next has nothing to do with the actions of Vice's voice actor. Rather, I'm commenting on the Western fandom as a whole. And that is that y'all got to stop acting like Toei cares about you. Toei does not care what we think. Toei does not care about me or you or what any of us think. Um, specifically, the Western fandom. Now, it's entirely valid if you don't want to watch Revise because of this situation. In fact, I'm not even sure if I want to anymore, to be honest with you, but it's, it's weird, right? To see so many people sit there on Twitter and be like, I'm boycotting this show until Toei gets rid of this racist POS, which normally I'm sure, yes, please, round of snaps, of course. But like, you know you pirate this, right? I know you ain't paying to watch this, right? Oh, oh my God, please. You understand those, what are they calling it on TikTok? Corn? Those, those corn ads? Oh, that's corny. I, that was accidental. That was completely accidental. I can't say it. Those corn ads that you see on Kiss Asian, they don't factor into Toei's profit margins. I, I promise you. I don't understand how you can think that you not pirating the show 
is gonna like stick it to the Toei company because that's exactly what they want. <laughs> y'all like, like y'all are so, y'all are so interesting to me. You know that y'all are so interesting to me. It's, I, I really, uh, that's, that's all I have to say about that really. And again, if you choose not to watch this show, by all means, you are valid. And 100%, I stand with you on that, if, if, if that's the reasoning. But if you're gonna sit here and act like Toei wants you to watch this, you're weird. That's all I'm gonna say, that, that's really it. it. It has nothing to do with the people who don't wanna watch it. That's, they're fine and they're justified in that. I might be one of those people now, I don't know. But like Toei doesn't like us. And they probably never will. I, I, I hope you can see how like I didn't want to say all that during the peak of the controversy because I really feel like it sounds like I'm defending his actions and I want to make it explicitly clear that this man disgusts me and I hate him. Um, in fact, let's dedicate the next part of this video to talking about how much I hate Vice. Damn, I'm glad y'all set it off. Used to be hard, now you just went up. Is that okay? First and foremost, Vice is a hating ass bitch who has no game, zero game. He is so loud and he never shuts up and not even in like a funny way, just in a way that makes me wanna like put a candlestick in my ear or something. His voice is graining. It sounds like someone sanded the back of his uvula. He's not charismatic in the slightest. I see how some of y'all are saying he's the next Momotaros. Um, and while I agree with that's that being what Toei wants, um, I'm telling you, I hate him. And I'm not sure if that's because of my preconceived bias or just because his suit is trash. His suits look cheap and they are, they're bad. I haven't seen anyone else point this out, but his mouth is literally a face mask. Like he looks like he's geared up for the pandemic. I will say this though, and that's why I really like the first time he tried breaking the fourth wall, um, but then he did it again and I didn't really like it as much. And then he did it again and again and then again, and I don't think he's ever gonna stop. Also, did I mention his voice actor's racist? I really don't like this guy. So uh, on a more positive note, let's talk about my favorite thing about this show, and that's Revy's suit. <clears throat> I wanna let you know, I screamed when I saw this fool pull up in the pink and blue. I mean, like, you don't understand how I felt. Toei may not like the rest of the Western fandom, but this is how I know they watch my videos. They literally made him the colors of my channel. He is my brand. This is insane. Not to mention, he's dinosaur themed? B besides cowboys in like general, um, I've really wanted to see like an insect themed Sentai or like a dinosaur themed rider. Th that's just sick. But again, cowboy anything would, would also be really cool. So I was all about the pink and blue dinosaur. All about that. Um, but then I saw his other forms. And, my, and I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm, I'm less upset about the fact that most of them are just regular animals um, than I am about the fact that they're common Rider references. I'm just gonna be blunt about it. I'm sick of anniversary stuff. I must seem really negative in this video. Um, but it's just like, I have anniversary fatigue at this point. Like Kamen Rider Geo was literally like two years before this. And not to mention that like Sentai is in the middle of an anniversary season and the party just never fucking stops with Ultraman here. I'm just sick of anniversary seasons. To be honest with you, they don't feel special anymore. They bore me, in fact, I miss when team-ups felt like big events and they weren't just like expectations. This concept has been done over a million times and they've yet to do it as well as they've done it uh, since Gokaiger and Decade, when they were the two first ones to do this. Squall said it best while we were on uh, one of Hockley's streams the other day. And by the way, click this. Uh, it'll, it should take you to the video of that stream. I don't know if Hockley's left in the final edit. And that's how, like in the past decade, we really haven't seen an Ultraman that didn't use the powers of previous Ultramen to transform. This is probably gonna be the most controversial thing I say in this video. Y'all are just gonna forget about the Vice stuff at this point. But I'd rather see us go down the route that Power Rangers is going on right now, rather than see us continue down this continuous anniversary path 
specifically like how Power Rangers is slowly phasing into this era where it seems like Mighty Morphin just is going to be the brand. It might, there's not going to be a new season every year. It's just going to be Mighty Morphin. It's going to be just Mighty Morphin continuously throughout. It's just Mighty Morphin Power Rangers and that's it. I wouldn't mind if we just went with being Vanilla Go Ranger at that point or Vanilla Ichigo every year. Um, that's far more interesting to me than seeing every season be a reference to another season. Because at that point, you don't have to reference older content anymore because that's just what the show is at that point. Y'all are gonna ruin me for that take. Y'all are gonna fucking hate me. Oh my God, y'all are gonna hate me. So, um, what do I actually like about this show? I like the characters so far. I really like how Iki doesn't seem to be one of those super altruistic, nonsense screaming main characters that we seem to get every year in Rider and Sentai now. Like he seems much more focused on like defending his family and his bathhouse and like things that matter to him personally than he is about, you know, the greater scope of the entire world and protecting everyone's smiles. Like I kind of like this more sort of, you know, homely sort of specific it's a nice change of pace i also really enjoy the younger brother i know it's obvious that he's gonna be a common rider himself eventually but i really like how they're framing his story so far specifically how he was supposed to be revised and now he isn't revised and now there's sort of like this weird tension between him and iki that's sort of like i, I like it so far but it's not like like he hates him it's more like he's just like wanting to be him and it's 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 cool so far how they're doing it i also really enjoy how so far it doesn't seem to be another one of those seasons where we get like a billion and one riders much like how anniversary seasons are like annoying to me now i don't find the concept of having a ton of riders um interesting anymore it was really neat when ryugi did it and it was awesome when gaim did it and then it just kind of was the status quo by the time Saber did it. I actually have a lot of problems with Saber, but that's that's just another video entirely. I just miss the old days when it was like Forze and Meteor or like Wizard and Beast. Now it seems that three plus riders is like the new franchise standard. And actually, I do like how they are technically two riders, but I'm kind of looking at this like it's a double Deno situation where they're like kind of the same dude in my head. And I mean, in all seriousness, I really do have to applaud this show for starting out with multiple riders in such a way, I guess, and like framing it in a way where I'm not immediately bothered by it. I actually like this concept and I actually think that they have a lot of interesting things that they can do with it. Again, go watch Hawk's video. It'll be here up here and also in the description and at the end screen. Just go watch Hawk's video. Um, but past that, I really don't have much else that I want to say about anything else. I really like how this season is focusing on the whole family. Again, I like the family dynamic. I think it's a, it's much more, it's a much smaller scope, but it's a much more me impactful and like meaningful one for Kamen Rider. And, and, I, and I like how they're already starting to play with that dynamic with like Iki's little brother. And like, it seems like the sister is gonna be important somehow. So I'm, I'm just interested in it. Most of all, I know I've been really hard on this show, uh, but I, I, I do wanna say that there's one thing that I that I, I, I kind of, I really like about Revi so far. And that's that y'all can finally stop talking about Saber. <laughs>